Blender 2.61 has just been released and it is full of, of phenomenal new features. Uh, hopefully I can show you this stuff without uh, the screen capture software uh, causing too much problems because this is very processor intensive. So anyway, um, the first thing, which is you know probably the most uh, important uh, addition, although this is probably the most feature-rich upgraded Blender I've ever seen, uh, is that if you go here under the render menu, um, you can choose from Blender Render or the new Cycles Render. And when you do that, um, let's I have two views here. I have one with the traditional view, and I have the other one which I'm going to switch from the shading uh, viewport shading to rendered. Okay, so now you can see here what it is. What the rendered is is uh, it's showing you the rendering in real time, and not only that, but the entire render engine is this new what they call physically based. So basically, uh, what you can do is let me uh, let me get rid of. Well, let me bring in. Let's create a new object here. Let's create a plane. Shift A, add a plane. You know what? Let me. Turn on. Oh, you know what? I I haven't added any of the add-ons yet. Sorry, uh, I just installed this just recently, so um, I, I don't have the screen capture keys. So anyway, um, here's here's a new plane, and um, we're going to turn this into like a light source for us. Uh, the the thing is that um, with the new render engine comes a also a new material uh, engine. So we click on materials, we click new you'll see that this is completely different from the regular material settings uh, that you're used to if you see my other stuff. And basically everything here is node based and whatnot, which will seem scary at first, but uh, you can get incredible uh, images with very little, in very little time with this engine. So we're going to turn this plane here into a light source. So we're just going to click on the surface settings, we're going to go to emission, Okay, so you can see here that it's already in this uh, rendered viewport. You can see the light already changing here. So we're going to crank the strength of this up quite a lot. Okay, and then if you actually, if you select the light that comes with the scene, you can see that the light actually has its, uh, actually has materials as well. So you can use the standard lights like you have been, but uh, you can also use the, um, kind of just basically turn objects, any object that has a mission set, turns into a light source. So I'm going to um, get rid of the regular light object. Okay. Select that. We'll turn it down just a little bit. Um, turn it down to 60 maybe. Okay. So you can see already we're starting to get... The neat thing about it is that um, you get all the bounces that light gets when you you know basically bounce light off of things. And also the, the new materials, for example, if you want to add materials to the monkey here, uh, let's go for glossy. Okay, so you see here we're getting um, like a glossy metallic finish, and uh, if we, but the the real thing is if you go to glass, you immediately start getting realistic looking glass uh, in no time. And basically, what the render engine will do is it will keep continually uh, refining things. Uh, so as you can see here, as we manipulate it, you can get an idea of what your rendering is going to look like uh, in advance because it's rendering stuff in real time. If you start moving the lights around, there's no more guesswork of, of you know rendering and finding out what looks good or what doesn't look good and then rendering again, uh, all that kind of stuff. So if you move the light back here, you can see exactly you know what, what you're getting. What you see is what you get in real time. Of course, now this is much, much faster than, usually it's much, much faster. The, uh, again, like I said, the screen capture stuff is, is causing it to slow down just a little bit, but uh, it actually renders pretty quickly. Uh, you'll notice that everything looks very gritty. You can see here it's tracing the samples, uh, 2 out of 10. And even when we uh, let it go, when we finally get to uh, 10 samples, uh, you're going to see that it's very, very gritty looking image. It has a, kind of a grain in the shadow areas and stuff. So what you can do is, when you go in the render tab, there's also a new section in the render tab. Uh, it's under integrator and you can uh, control all the presets for the new render engine inside of the integrator so for example uh, if you want to you know stop at a certain amount on the preview uh, you can do that or you can just you know keep adding to it and then it will you can set to 100 you can set to a thousand doesn't matter um, it'll just keep refining the image uh, 
to whatever you set there. Same thing with the render. You just, you know, obviously you have to stop the render at some point. But, uh, you know, the, you can set the render to a certain thing and the preview to something else. But, uh, um, obviously, we'll just keep refining the image as you do things. And everything, every time, of course, like I was showing you, every time you start manipulating the scene, it will start rebuilding it. But as you can see here, you get a real-time idea of what's going on. And uh, let's go ahead and change the color here. Okay, we'll change the color of the ground here. Okay, use nodes. Okay, we'll give this a velvet texture. Okay, you can start seeing already that there's there's just a lot you can do here. We'll turn this to like red or something. So, I mean, it's amazing, and the uh, especially you know the materials. It's the two biggest things about this. Is, well, the three biggest things. One is the interactive viewport display, so you, you can see what you're getting. Uh, the other thing is these new material types, uh, for example, glass and metal, uh, different things, velvet, translucency. These things were really difficult to to do before, and now they're they're you know pretty pretty easy. Let me let me add an, another object here. Let's add a UV sphere. Oops. I'll scale it down. I'm gonna put this kind of kind of almost inside of here. So you can see the effects that come out of this. Okay. Mission. Set that to something high here. So you can see it's starting to go through there. And we'll select this guy. And instead of glass, we'll use translucent. And it's really apparent on uh, certain things like uh, you know flatter objects and stuff. This might take a while, but you can see here around the ears how you know translucency is the effects uh, sort of like if you put your uh, if you put your hand over a flashlight, for example, you would see in the thinner parts of your your flesh you can see the light kind of bleeding through it, and so this uh, this is the uh, translucent effect. It's very difficult to get in, in other things, and again, usually this uh, this solution is is uh, already you know usable by the time I, I tell you about this, but you know again. Keep saying that screen capture software is, is you know, causing some delays. But basically, uh, the Cycles render engine. I'll be getting into it in more depth later on. But basically, to let you know, there's an entirely new render engine. Uh, it is interactive preview. Uh, it has new material types. Uh, you can turn objects into um, light sources. And you always have been able to do, uh, you know, an emission value. But this is real, actual light sources that actually. Uh, spill out into the scene and actually affect the scene and whatnot. So that is the first aspect. Okay. Next one is again. I haven't even set up my environment here. I haven't added the add-ons and everything. But uh, let's add a plane. And I'm going to scale this baby up. Okay. Tab into edit mode, and then under the add here, I'm going to do subdivide. I'm going to choose like a large subdivision, like 20. Okay tab out of edit mode and then let's give it a okay let's go to our modifiers and add subdivision surface so it gets some nice smoothness and then we'll add the new modifier which is the ocean simulator okay now you might be thinking you know if you're a, a big time blender user you're thinking hey Brian this, this kind of stuff has been around for a long time well um, you know this is the first one where it's been actually integrated into it uh, these are the first, what I would, I, I just stick to the official releases because I don't want to mess with stuff that may or may not be in an official release or may or may not be, uh, you know, easy to use at that point. So uh, the ocean modifier, as you can see here, we've taken this plane and it has turned it into like an ocean environment. Let me uh, make it so that it's a bit easier to see. We'll go to our display. I want to be able to show off the uh, shadows on the wire there a little bit better. So we'll go to our GLSL display. And we'll go to textured mode. <clears throat> okay, and we'll turn this into a sun. Okay. And rotate this guy a little bit so that <clears throat> I just want to get it so you can see the uh, uh, you know the actual flow of the, of the ocean a little bit better. So we'll select this uh, ocean uh, object and then we'll go here. So right now, if we scrub through a timeline, the ocean is just sitting there. But if we go ahead and animate our time value, uh, we'll just hover our mouse over the time value, 
And uh, in this case, I'll just hit, hit I to create a keyframe. And then um, you can just go ahead and I'll just scrub to the end here, frame 250 or so. And I'll change this value to, for example, like seven or something. And I'll hit I to create another keyframe. Or if you have, you know, auto keyframing on, it will also do the same thing. So now if we go back and if we play the animation, Again, you know, on your computer, this will play back in real time, but uh, it doesn't seem like much is going on here in, in my system but uh, because of the screen capture, but, uh, you know, like I said, these things are, are kind of processor intensive. Uh, but if you add a, a material to this to make it look like a really nice ocean, add a, a kind of a, you know, a world light source to mimic a sky, this adds the realistic motion of the, of the water to it. Uh, the other thing it does, which I don't really have time to show you, but um, if you go here, uh, generate foam, and then what you have to do is you have to go into the uh, node editing window and set it up, but basically it will create the white caps and stuff on the tops of the, uh, of the water. I'll get into it in a different tutorial, because all of these things, you know, there's just a lot to show you on, on each, each separate function. There's just so many of them. So... Um, Basically, what it'll do is it'll create so the the foam that, that comes out of certain uh, parts of the of the ocean that roil. But basically, with almost no effort whatsoever, you've already created a realistic ocean simulation here. So it's another fantastic feature there. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and show you the other one. Okay, let's get this box going here. And I'll hit tab into edit mode, and then I'm going to subdivide it. And I'll get the number of cuts to like something high, like 20. Because this really only works, I found out, with uh, kind of a high number of subdivision. It doesn't look good otherwise. Uh, all right, and let's add another object here. Let me scroll this out. Okay, let's add a little, a little ball. All right, and let's give each of these a material that's very different. Get the ball. We'll click on new image. Now you'll see here that the material editor is like what you're what you're used to. It's because you know we're in the Blender render engine right now. And I'll give this like a like a blue color. Okay. And then I'll give this. We can just keep it a beige so it's easy to see. Okay. So let's move the ball over here. Scaled up a little bit. Okay, and then I'll hit uh, I to create a keyframe at the location and rotation area. And then I'll just set this to like 90 frames. I don't have to have a lot. Okay, I'll turn on auto keying. And uh, let's just go to frame 70 here or something. Move this little guy over. Okay, now we have a little animation going. I'm going to have it dip down right in the middle of the animation there, just to show you exactly what this effect will do. You're thinking, what could he possibly be up to? We shall see. Okay. All right, so now let's select this cube, and we'll go to our Dynamics tab, and we will turn on Dynamic Paint. And since this is going to be the object that receives the paint from this blue object here, uh, I'm going to say Add Canvas. Okay, that's, I'm just going to accept the defaults right now. And then on this object here that's going to give the paint, we're going to click on Dynamic Paint and say Brush and Add a Brush. Okay, and we're just going to keep it the way it is. We could use the object material, but it's already gotten the color from the object material. Uh, so now when I play the animation, you'll see that wherever the uh, paint uh, brush object goes through, it has, in fact, uh, painted that object with the material or, or color that this object has. It looks very gritty here because there's not a lot of subdivisions and whatnot, very blocky, but if you subdivide everything and, uh, you know, add some modifiers and whatnot and add some more subdivisions, uh, you will get a much smoother uh, effect. Uh, I know it's supposed to work with the particle system, I believe, as well. Uh, I did a few tests, and I wasn't really that successful yet, but uh, I'll keep informed. Again, this is another really fantastic feature. You can imagine you know, all the different things you can do with this. You could paint brush strokes. You could paint, uh, well, basically just about you know, 
sky's the limit. You can paint a logo or anything like that. Uh, you know, blood splatters, anything, anything that you want. And so that is the dynamic paint. And the last one, which so far I this is the one I've had the least success with. Again, I, you know, this has only been out for a few days. Uh, so let's go. There's a new tab actually, and it's called the Movie Clip Editor. Okay, when you load this up, you see here that uh, we, we can bring in a movie clip. So let's open a movie clip, and let's go into my movies. Oops, and here's. An animation test animation I did of the character Deathwing from World of Warcraft. And let's play this. Whoa, I'm getting a playback. The screen capture software is really causing some issues here. Okay, well you see if I scrub through the frames, there's Deathwing flying around. Uh, I'm gonna redo this animation, that's why I haven't posted it yet. But basically, if, if you know anything about World of Warcraft, then you know, you know who Deathwing is. He's a big dragon who will randomly come around and, and kill you. Uh, but basically, this is the motion tracking system. So if we had, for example, I just didn't have any uh, actual video to show you. But if you had video, you can track points on a, a, a movie clip, and then that will align the blender camera and camera motion with whatever you've shot. So, for example, if I want to track um, this eyeball here, I'm going to just say add a tracker. Okay. And you can see as we move around uh, on the uh, right-hand side in the options window, you can see like a zoomed-in area of where my cursor is. So I'm going to put this right on top of the eyeball here. If I can line it up. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to just go ahead and hit the uh, track play playthrough button here. Oh, it's actually going farther than it did before. Uh, you'll see that it kind of lost the solution there at one point, probably because this thing is not really meant to track animation. It's meant to track actual video. But you can see here that when we play it back, it tracks that point you know, pretty good. I mean, there was not really a lot that you had to do to get to track that point. So you'll see that and until it lost the eyeball there, uh, it was tracking it. So, for example, you can get this data, and then you can bring it into your standard 3D scene, and you could do certain things, for example, you could use it to match up three-dimensional objects or blender objects or effects with um, camera, you know, video that's already been shot or rendered in, in a camera or something else. So that's the motion tracking system. <clears throat> There's a host of other improvements, which I haven't even really, as you can see from my, uh, my default scene here, I haven't even had a chance to, uh, you know, go ahead and, and set up everything, add my add-ons and everything. It still has a default cube. Uh, so, let me hit new, and I don't know, if, I mean, just in case you, you, you want to know, uh, if you want to get rid of this stupid default cube, hit X to, to delete it and go to your file, uh, user preferences, save as default, and now when you hit new, you'll see that, uh, you, so whatever the scene is at the time, that will be your, your defaults if you save it at that. Okay, so anyway, this is a look, uh, first look at some of the fantastic features in uh, Blender 2.61. Uh, you can see there, Blender 2.61. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing stuff. Makes it uh, actually a really valuable tool that I, I think is going to actually, in, in a year or so here, Blender is going to compete with the, the heavies of the world, like the Mayas and, and the Soctomages and whatnot. Those things will still be in use, but I think Blender is really really catching up and uh, it's certainly overtaken Lightwave in, in my toolbox. There's just so many tools, they're so good, you know, once you figure out what, how they work, they work exactly the way you would expect and they're very, very fast to use. So uh, it's, it's absolutely a fantastic program, uh, all free. So uh, I think you should go to the blender.org uh, website, download it, uh, make a donation or buy some Blender goodies just to keep them going, buy the Sintel DVD. Uh, buy any of that, buy the t-shirts and stuff, and I think I'm going to buy a t-shirt for myself for Christmas here as an early Christmas present. So uh, there you go, Blender 2.61. I'll keep you informed on the new features.